Welcome to the first ever video episode of Arbor Creek's Battle Supreme. <laughs> oh, <laughs> check it out! It'll still be available for audio as well, but you're really missing out because this shit's about to be up on YouTube. So. Yeah. so head over to the YouTube channel if you're listening to the audio only. Get in there. Well, as always, I want to say thank you for everybody who's been uh, listening and fan of the podcast and sharing it, spreading the word. Um, we're super stoked to finally have the video set up and ready to go. You know, this is going to be cool. I feel like uh, this is another way for people to really uh, connect with us. And uh, it's really the start of a whole new venture, it feels like, you know. Like Next we, level. Yeah. It's we, lit. We've been doing it's the podcast. Lit for a while now but i think the video is going to really help you know boost it up to the next gonna level we're going to be able to throw some level up throw some clips on the the tiktok and the instagram all that good stuff you know we're conforming yes <laughs> it is the way these days you must work not just play anyway al you want to take it away Yes, and just a friendly reminder, make sure you share the podcast. That's Harbor Creek's Battle Supreme. Leave a rating review if you feel so inclined to. And also, you know, you can message us on all our social handles. We'll answer. Let us know what you think. If you have any battles that, you know, entice you, think that's really cool, we'll totally take up that suggestion. But on deck for today, to anyone who doesn't know, we do do music, but we do other stuff too. And today we're doing music-themed movies. Whoop, whoop. Oh, boy. <laughs> on deck for the battle today, we have... 2008's The Rocker versus 2001's Rockstar. Oh, Rockstar. <laughs> Two totally different movies. Uh, one's way more of a drama. The other one's more of your slapstick style. A lot of people from The Office in there. And it's it's they're both great movies in their own right. Um, and it has a cool contrast because if you watch both movies, one's about a guy who is in a cover band who gets the chance of a lifetime to be in his favorite band, and he's on the come-up. On the reverse side in The Rocker, you have Buddy Fish, who was in a big band on the come-up called Vesuvius, and right before they were about to make it, he gets kicked out, and he has to have a soul-crushing day job until the movie later on. So Sad. it's uh, kind of like the opposite opposing movies here. One's on the come-up, the other guy's on the downswing. I'm, for one, excited. Oh, yeah. So starting off, we're going to do uh, lead actors for the one-point round. On the side of The Rocker, we have Rain Wilson. Mm. And for Rockstar, we have Mark Wahlberg. Oh. Marky Mark, baby. Marky, Marky, Marky Mark. Hmm. I'm going to go with Frank first on this one. Uh, I mean, short answer, I'm just going to go with Marky Mark. Because I feel like, uh, I don't know, he just was acting more, you know? And Rain Wilson, obviously he was in the office when that movie was made, yeah. right? So, yeah. I mean, he was just doing his thing. I just liked Mark Wahlberg's role better. I thought it was more believable, you know? But that's just me. Yeah, I think it goes along with... I think they're two totally different actors, honestly. So it's kind of hard to compare them because you got Mark Wahlberg, who's just more of that straight-cut series guy, came a box office attraction. And then you have Rain Wilson, who... More of a TV guy. He's in a lot of, like, really good comedies and stuff like that. So it's definitely hard to compare them, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess it, it depends what your style of acting is, I guess. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, out of the two, it's just Rain Wilson's doing comedies, and I always seem to do comedy. And when that movie came out, Mark Wahlberg, he wasn't really in much, you know, so it's kind of cool to see him acting, <laughs> you know. So would you say this movie is a bigger deal for Mark Wahlberg than it would be for Rain Wilson? Yeah. I think so. Fair enough. You know. All right. Larry, give us the stuff. Who's the better lead role? It's Rain. Her name is Rain. His name's Rain Wilson. Rain. That's the only movie I know him in. Fun fact. For, other than corpses. being in the office. House of a stuff. Thousand Corpses was, I think, his first movie. Oh, right. yeah, it becomes Fishboy, doesn't he? Becomes Fishboy? I think so, yeah. They, they put the mermaid leg down. His name's Fish in this movie? Yeah, see? Wow. Oh, creepy. <laughs> anyway, go Damn. on. Sorry. Uh, Smart stuff. I think it's cool, man. I like the name Rain. I'm going to pick that because I like that <laughs> name. 
Uh, I do like Mark Wahlberg, though. And I think that Mark Wahlberg is actually really funny, too. Is, yeah. Like, he, maybe not in this particular movie, but, like, in the other guys and stuff like that. Like, yeah. he's got a lot of different uh, personalities for film. But I'm going to go with Rain, just because that's a badass name. And uh, I feel like his that is more of a star movie for him in his lineup of films than Mark Wahlberg for that particular film, in my opinion. It's a good take. Yeah, good, I mean, both good. You know, what I'm saying? I like them both. Yeah. His career was, you know, still to come at that point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think this is. It was kind of a unique uh, part for him, honestly, because later on, Mark Wahlberg, in my opinion, he kind of. I don't know. I don't know if the words like one trick pony. That's probably a little too harsh, but I think he kind of plays the same guy in a lot yeah. of movies. He's in that action comedy yeah. type. He knows line. his role. Brothers, you know? He knows yeah. his role. But, I mean, a lot of people do that. You got The Rock. You got like all those guys that kind of do like their thing. Yeah. But he's really good at it, and that's why he makes all the dough. So yeah. who am I? You're right. Who the I mean, hell are you? I don't know your role, you know what I mean? All right. Well, David, you're a tiebreaker, so tell us what you think. Oh, shit. Um, it's tough because they both play. They do a great job in their roles, each of them, and both good movies. Um, what I do like about Rain is that he's a lot more eccentric of an actor, like facial expression. And just everything's always just a little bit more over the top, entertaining, and like charismatic. Charismatic, perfect, uh, perfect word. And um, he's great, and he's a goofball, and he does a great job, plays the role really well. Now Wahlberg, the Wahlberger boy, Marky 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 Mac. He, um, I think he's underrated overall. I mean, he is famous and he's rich, so I guess maybe not underrated, but. I think he's really good. I like like all of his movies. Like every single one I've seen, I, I don't think there's one that I'm like, oh no, I hate that movie. Um, I think he's funny in comedy movies, and I think he can act pretty well serious. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Wahlberg on this one, man. Mm. Damn. Sweet. Yeah. Mar- I mean, it's a, it's oh, a close yeah. one. You know, shout out Marky Mark. We love you. If you're listening, shout out Rain. We love this you. This is for you. Yes. Look into my eyes. I mean, it kind of is for them. We picked these <laughs> movies. So, sick. Next up on the one point round for the second, we're going to go with supporting cast. Supporting and there's a whole list of people. I'm not going to read all of them. You can look it up on your own time. But obviously, for uh, The Rocker, we have Rain Wilson as the leading role. And underneath him, we got Emma Stone, wow. uh, who played Amelia, Teddy Geiger, who plays Curtis, the singer. Uh, Josh Gag plays the keyboard player Matt. You have Bradley Cooper, Cooper Will Arnett, Fred Armisen. Yep. Uh, there's a bunch more people. Friggin Jane Lynch, Christina yeah. Applegate. So, I mean, yeah, that's a star-studded cast. And, I mean, undeniable. Oh, yeah. Might, you know, before I name the other one, I think I, I think it might be the stronger cast. I think the, you know, on, on the rock star side of things, it's like Mark Wahlberg, Jennifer Aniston, mm-hmm. and then... Honestly, a lot of musicians. We have Zach Wild. Zach Wild. Yes. Sir. Jason Bonham. Uh, who plays uh Timothy Spall plays Matt's the manager. Uh Kirk, which is like the main guy, is played by uh Dominic West. So yeah, like not like too many big names, but I mean you got some big rock star star power in there, which is really dope. I think it's cool when you have music movies and those actual musicians. They, in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then when we talked about it, it's like the music is done by them. So when you hear all the guitar done by Steel Dragon, it's totally Zach Wild. Oh, yeah. 100%. Oh, yeah. So uh, who has the best supporting cast? I'm going to go with David first on this one. Uh, you know, it's tough because they both have really good cast for the films. Um, Rockstar... It's hard to not choose that because, like I said, they got they got some some killer musicians in there. Adds to the authenticity of everything. Um, but then, the rocker man, I think I think everybody in the rocker is like perfectly fitted for the movie itself and for their roles. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like they all just fit so well. It's it's a tough choice, but you know I'm gonna go I'm gonna go the rocker on this one. Ooh. I think it just it all works best together. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
Yeah. <laughs> it's it, it's it's a list. It's yeah, honestly it's crazy. A it's a crazy list. Sweet. Uh Larry, who has the best supporting cast? <sighs> Got to agree. It is definitely a list, but I'm gonna have to go with uh, Rockstar for Zach Wild. Fair enough. I can't argue. I mean, just yeah. because it's awesome. Like he's the and guy. You see him on stage, like. Just ripping it, you know, like this definitely, like it's him. I mean, it has to be. You know what I mean? Do you think he showered for the movie? Doubt no, it. I, I so. hope not. I hope not. He's well known for not showering, so. <laughs> but uh, I just think that that's cool that Zach Wilde's in the movie, and like every time, like he's not really in the movie a bunch, like as far as like dialogue, but then like you see him, like you know what I'm saying, and he doesn't have a beard, and like he doesn't like look like how he does today, and it's like huh. he shoots the shotgun off the, the tour there bus. There he is, yeah, and he's on, yeah, he's got the gun. And it's just he's a hunter guy. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> what'd you do? I'm Brick. He's like, killed a lot of stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's just funny. It's just awesome. So yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, Zach Wilde and the rock star. Is it the rock star? Or just rock star. It's called rock star. Rock star. Okay, sorry. Come on, bro. Well, Frankie boy, oh, the that's... camera's on you still. Just go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, the rocker. It just has more famous people in it. Oh, yeah. Like, the comedians in the movie is just, like, at least ten comedians who are all hilarious. And then Bradley Cooper is a funny fucking guitar player. Like, I'm watching I'm like, is that Bradley Cooper? Because his hair was all in his face. You couldn't really see what was going on. Yeah. Rocker for me. I mean, they lost, but oh, well. What do you mean they lost? The, the rocker one. won. I thought you picked Rockstar and you picked Rockstar. No, you picked, picked the rocker. Because oh, are you list. paying attention, Frank? The list. The you know, the list. name is confusing. Yeah. It is. No, I mean, it is. Rockstar when I, when I thought of it, I was like, this is, <laughs> is going to be a tongue twister today. Rockstar, rocker. Oh, we won, so yeah, fuck off, Larry. Hey. This yeah. is a round table. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, oh, wait, you don't. Know, you played Rockstar. <laughs> See, I wasn't paying attention. You, you got me. <laughs> you got me. Jesus, guys, Flipped come on. It. Oh, yeah, because of Zach Wild, duh. Zach Wild, man. My bad. Zach Wild, let me shower with you. <laughs> All right, next up for the one point. Better concert scenes. There's the whole both movies are riddled with live concerts of the fictional bands playing in the whole movie. Who has the more epic scenes? And you can look at it. I mean, you know, Rocker. You got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and then you know, Rockstar. They're playing arenas the whole time, and it's a huge band, yeah. so it's badass. Yeah. Um. Tell me about it, Frank. What's the life? Uh, in the movie The Rocker, I thought that the scenes when they actually they get on tour for the first time, it actually like it feels good to watch them. Like they're playing for a room, no one knows who they really are, and the next thing you know, like they all love them. Like that's like literally what any band wants to happen when they go play a place they never played before, you know. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you get pulled up off stage on stage when you're singing the song. And the next thing you know, you're like singing the song with the band in the arena. And the next thing you know, you're in that band doing that same thing. Crazy. Which is also another like musician's dream. You know, like, dude, they're going to call me on stage tonight when I go see these guys. Like, I feel like everybody has that experience at least one time in their life, if not more. I'm going with Rockstar. All right. Yep. Sweet. It's a good choice. The one for Rockstar. I always yeah. like, I want to talk about really quick the scenes in the concert. Uh, you have, like, in the beginning of the movie where Mark Wahlberg wants to be in Steel Dragon, and he's yeah. in the front, and he's, stand up and yeah. shout out. He's singing it better than the guy in the band. <laughs> yeah. And he's looking at him like, who the fuck is this guy? And then at the end, he's jaded because he wants, he wants out, and then he has the kid yeah, down did. there doing the same thing as him, but he's looking Full at circle. him, and he's happy about it. But Full it, circle. And I also think it's super ironic that it, he goes from like an '80s hair metal band to like post grunge yeah. yep. at the end. At the end like of the play, movie, playing the Realism. times. Yeah, he even dresses he's like, like, like Eddie. Yeah, he has, this, up, he has like the Scott Stapp hair. Like it's like kind of long, kind of not. And he's like singing the song that he wrote for Jennifer Aniston a long he's got time that ago. Sweater on. Reminds me of Eddie Vedder. Yes. Yeah. At the end of that movie. Yeah. Cute little club. He's got Vedder vibes. Very quaint. Very quaint show. He's humble now. Let's just say he's a Vedder man. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> David. Give us a scoop. Better concert scenes. <clears throat> um, they're both cool. Uh, shout out to the rocker for the first concert when he plays the prom oh, with the, the kid band, <laughs> and he just doesn't stop playing. Like they're playing like a soft slow dance song. They're playing in your eyes. Yeah, yeah. And then I love that song. And then literally, 
he just like goes insane and they're all looking at him like dude like stop what are you doing <laughs> and he just has no idea and he's just like ah he's freaking out and then i thought that was hilarious so it was it was going it. like like super well in like the funny way like He's like, yeah, don't worry, I got yeah. it. I and he was do killing it. Sleep, yeah, and he was wasn't lying. <laughs> yeah, like it was like they were totally just killing it, and then he just went off the rails, and it was like it's my first show in twenty years. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was awesome, but I have to go rock star for the fact that getting called up on stage with your favorite band like is a dream for so many musicians. Like, yeah, bro. I would give anything to have that experience once. Probably it'd probably be amazing. I don't know who I would really choose, to be honest with you, but well, they would choose you. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> what, what band would I Side tangent, we should do this real quick. If you had to pick a band that that happened to you, what band would you choose? Oh, you here. start. We'll make it quick. Let's switch the full screen. Yeah. Um damn, you know I guess like if we're talking about present day right now, if Nate Mendel quit the Foo Fighters, I'd be front row for that bass audition, and I know all their songs anyway. So, and I could play behind my my hero Dave. Pun intended. I'm down. <laughs> my hero. <laughs> How about you guys? Zeppelin. But like, but like active band. How about oh, that? we'll keep it. We'll keep it active. Zeppelin in 2007. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> That would have been uh, insane, though. That would have been I don't know, crazy. Probably like My Morning Jacket or a fucking Marcus Ooh. King band or something. Just yeah, something sick. I can get up there and groove. That would man, be really you know? good. How about you, Larry? Kiss. Dude, that'd be sick. <laughs> that'd be <laughs> awesome. I can't even lie. That'd when I went awesome. and saw Kiss, I was with a friend of mine, John Hanks. Shout out, John Hanks. Um, he, we he had got me tickets. We were like super up close, you know. I I felt the pyro, and I remember just going off singing all the songs. And the lady in front of me turned around and she was like, you're making this show so enjoyable for me because of how much you are enjoying it. And I'm just thinking like, yeah, they should pull me up on stage. Right now. <laughs> and I'll light this fucker up right now. Watch out, Paul Stanley. Yeah. That's what it's all about. So kiss for me. That's awesome. Sick. Carry on. Carry on. Yes, yes, yes. All right, moving on to Larry. Best concert scenes between the two. I'm going to go with Rockstar again because I just feel like as a tribute band, even as – even at that show was yeah, extremely was, lit. Yeah, it was so lit. They were in like a factory. Like you never see like cover bands go working. that hard like that. We're huge. There's still like a, almost a whole sea of people, and like people are on tables and just raging. And then he just kicks the dude's amp over, and they start fighting and whatever. That's besides the point. But like that whole like that whole show was just awesome. Like if I played in a tribute band. I would want to play shows that size. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Not at a bar on the corner. Totally. You know what I mean? And there are tribute bands that play some pretty you know, notable shows, but I just think that that was just really cool, and people were just raging to the music, even though it wasn't the original band, but they really brought the feel. Granted, it's a movie, but they really brought the feel, you know, and made it really come to life as wanting to be Steel Dragon. Oh, yeah. That's why he was fighting with the guitar player, you know, because yeah. it wasn't note for note, whatever. Then they had to fight with another Steel Dragon cover band. Dude, I was yeah, about to that, say that. That's awesome, too. But the, they were like, talk, the both <laughs> singers the were liars. talking shit, and then he was like talking about his jacket. Mark Wahlberg was like, it's not even embroidered with the signature, like yeah. some random <laughs> stuff. Like he knows it like 218. Obsessed. It's so sick. Awesome. <laughs> well, that was a round table. That was a round table. Wow. One. Round. We're bringing it around. Bringing it around. Round town, we're sitting at an oval table. Damn. I'm looking at everyone right now, and we definitely have faces only for podcasts. We are. We apologize. What are you going to do? Look, I'm fucking gorgeous, all right? Deal with it. <laughs> Next up. Last of the one-point round. Overall, better told story. Like, from front to end, I know they're both surreal. You know what I mean? Not necessarily realistic. I I say like both of them are kind of like one in a million things. Oh, I yeah. think maybe the rocker is maybe slightly even more unrealistic, but I don't know. But overall, which story makes the most sense or which story do you like better or which story is, is just told overall better? Uh, continuity, all that stuff. Uh, I know you have appreciation for cinema, David, so go ahead. All right. So I agree they're both fantastic. And it's cool because they both tell, how are you saying? It's like the one in a million rock star story. And that's what, you're, that's what it's all about. It's like, it's all about that excitement of 
this only happens to that one lucky person, essentially, you know? Yeah. And I think that is a great story to tell. Um, the Rocker's cool because it's a little bit more fun with it, and it's a little bit more lighthearted with it. Um, it has a good has a good story arc in general. Uh, it's kind of like almost like a revenge theme, but not in like a bad way, like in a good way, like a you know yeah. redemption. Redemption. That's that's the word I'm looking for. It's like a redemption story, you know. It's kind of like a School of Rock in a way, almost. Almost. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very similar. I feel like in, in story aspect. One rock show can change the world. Yeah, man. One song. And uh, when it comes to Rockstar, I think it's 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 way more of like a true to the reality story of like what it's like being a musician of like you want this more than anything. It's your dream. Then once you obtain it, you realize the reality of it and that it's not everything it's always cracked up to be, even though you may be grateful and enjoy it. And then, you know, it's like the the real full cycle story of like the reality of it, of that like lifestyle in that situation. Um, so I'm gonna go Rockstar just because I think it's just a little bit more depth and just a little bit more real, a little bit more uh, gets you in the feels a little bit more. You know, it's a little deeper. So I'm gonna go with it. I feel you there. What comes down to it, it's just like, what style of movie do you like? Because they're totally vastly different. One's slapstick and one's way more of a, just like a real theatrical thing. Yeah. You know? 100%. So, I like it. Larry, better told story. See, I was going to, I'm going to go with every reason David said for the opposite. Because I feel like when I'm watching Rockstar, you kind of already get a ballpark idea of like how it's gonna go like gets in over his head you can tell his girls like i'll be honest uh his girl's a trooper with mark Wahlberg for a whole like beginning of that movie she's like raging with him and kind of just giving him the freedom and he's like doing some questionably out of pocket stuff you know compared to some you know i don't know if everyone's girlfriend would be as cool as her in that situation you know what i mean but like you kind of see the road you know what i mean where it's a little bit more creative and sure you'd say slapstick definitely with uh the rocker or whatever but i think that that's just kind of it's just the humor aspect of it it's just kind of wild and it's still like it's it's almost like untangible like it's almost like would never happen like likely would never happen but just the fact that it does in the film is just funny you know what i mean for the for the humor of it and i just think that that story is a little bit better just as far as creativity i guess so i'm gonna go with the rocker Sweet. What's actually really funny about that movie, like, was there a movie at that time, or, like, were there movies before that talked about, like, oh, going viral, going viral? Yeah. You know what I mean? It was, like, kind of OG in that aspect. Dudes, like, naked playing drums, and they go viral, and that's how they get big. I think maybe not the idea of it, not the idea of a guy getting kicked out of the band playing with his nephew and stuff, but I think that movie depicts... uh, the come up really well you know what i mean because it's like you're playing the proms you're playing the places when nobody's there and all of a sudden more and more people are showing up more and more people are showing up so i think it's realistic in that aspect that's what i really like about the rocker because it is kind of i think it shows more maybe people just partied harder harder back then but it, it is realistic like i think more you know with the whole like I don't know, they they're want to go back and play video games or, like, stuff on the bus and just, like, kids on the come up. So I think it maybe Rockstar might be a little bit embellished. But also, those are all playing off stories from the 70s and 80s. So maybe not. They party freaking hard back then. Yeah, it's true. It's different time periods. So, yeah, maybe they both depicted the times pretty well because, like, that dude's like, we used to party. Like, he was talking about like they did in Rockstar is what yeah. Fish did in The Rocker. And then he's like, these guys want to come back and play video games. He's like, yeah, man, we just played a sh- gig. I'm trying to chill. <laughs> eh, that's totally me. <laughs> I am not a partier. Like, I'm that guy. Like, we're, like, gigging. I'm like, all right, I'm good. Can we go now? <laughs> um, Frank, better told story. Or not better. 
Yeah, better told story. Sorry. Uh, well, it's kind of cool because, like, in both ways, like, the rocker was almost kind of like predicting how it is now. Because, like, I feel like now, like, you blow up online, and next thing you know, you're famous. Like, th- you know, there's people out there that had a YouTube video that caught fire, and next thing you know, they're on tour. So it's kind of cool there. And then with Rockstar, that basically happened to Zach Wild. Yes. Like how we how we joined Ozzy's band. Like he would just go to the shows all the time. And next thing you know, it's like, oh, this guy plays guitar. Let's see how he sounds. And next thing you know, boom, he's in the band for years. To this day. To this day. To this day. To this to day. This day. But uh <laughs> I'm gonna go with the rocker. Cause I think it is pretty cool how it like was kind of just like foreshadowing how it was going to be not even you know 10 years later so to this day to this day to this very evening sick so we got uh rocker taking the w on that one. Oh, sweet getting closer on to the two-point round better soundtrack i mean rockstar is riddled with classics and the Rocker has some classics in there too, but also it's riddled with like original music from that. And so is so is Rockstar. It has all a bunch of like Steel Dragon stuff. Yeah. And then the Rocker, it's all ADD stuff. Like a lot of the movie, it's just like touring montages, you know, I'm not bitter, all, all his little angsty stuff. So, uh, yeah. Better, uh, better soundtrack overall. I'm going to go with Larry. Ooh. I'm going to go with Rockstar again for the scene when they're all at the party and everyone's making out with everyone and it's just Dude. Ted Nugent. Yep. Dude, I was going to say that same thing. Yeah, just because I'm, I'm yeah. like watching that movie and I'm just like, oh, yeah, dude, this is definitely the move. Like everyone's getting all touchy-touchy and everyone's getting lit, you know, everyone's like grooving and it's just stranglehold just like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that deep groove sets the mood for that moment. I'm just like, yeah, it's getting spicy. They start taking drugs. You know what I'm saying? Starting getting a little, uh, you know, lifted. A lot, heavy. vibe? Yeah, it's so it's I got to rock with that one. Sweet. Rock with Rockstar? Yeah. Rock on, Frank. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, the obvious pick, just because of all the classic tunes that are in it, is Rockstar. But I do want to talk about the rocker because every time that Fish is, like, doing something or he's, like, he himself is having an experience in the movie – there's always a certain drum part, it, and I notice it's the same one throughout the whole thing. But it sounds—it's basically the beginning of uh, the Zeppelin song. What the fuck? Rock and roll. No. The fool in the rain. Fool in the rain. Fool in the rain. And then there, there's other parts in the movie where, like, when he gets sad and he throws his drumsticks in the water by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's almost the same exact notes. To like the chorus of uh, "A Day in the Life" by the Beatles, so I don't, I don't know if you guys caught that, but you should just go back and watch some like certain parts. It's pretty cool, but yeah, my pick is uh, Rockstar. Sweet, because, you know. Yeah, I mean, whoever wrote ADD songs was talented because like those songs were good, you know, catchy, yeah. and totally got the vibe with the teenager that is writing the songs. You know what I mean? So it is really cool. Ah. Uh, Guess that leaves Dave. Oh, it leaves me, huh? Oh, yeah. Ha-ha. <laughs> well, you know, they're both good. But I'm going to go strictly off of just, like, my taste in music and say rock star. Like, the rocker music is good. Oh, yeah. It's just not, like, stuff that I really dig that much, even though it is good for what it is. But I just got to go rock star on that one. It's pretty easy for me, honestly. Sweet. Yeah. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, brothers. Oh, yeah. Easy peasy and a lemon squeezy. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. Yeah. Playing out with the controls. He's having yeah. some fun. All right, Al. What's All right. next? Next up on the two point round, we kind of alluded it with the better told story, but we're going to do a uh, better or best depiction of the music industry. And both movies are riddled with that type of stuff. I mean, 
you have the rocker where you know he comes in he's like you know it's like more towards the end he's like i got some steel dragon tunes i want to get his stuff in and you know kirk takes him to the side and he's saying look they have expectation of us and we're doing this you know the steel dragon thing because that's what they like and we're going to keep doing that type of music and that was the thing but also the life sex drugs rock and roll but we're talking strictly about like the business and expectations and then on the side of the you know on the rocker you got the shady manager who hasn't heard the stories about the shady manager trying to kick out one of the band members because of the image and all that stuff it's it's (laughs) happened yeah so like both are showing a bunch of sides of like the dirty sides of the music industry um is i'm gonna go with dave first all right well I'm going to go the rocker on this one for simply the fact that it's more modern and more relatable to the now. The clicks, baby. Yeah, the clicks, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I just think overall, maybe not necessarily, I guess, if the question is like the music industry or whatever. Yeah, more of the business, not the life. You yeah, know. but like, I think like that's the thing about the rocker is that the music business now more than ever is not necessarily about just the management it's about social media and the internet and the world and so i'm gonna give it to them for that because i think it's a a unique way to go about it and super realistic and very much applies to the, the world we live in and the music business today to this day to this day to this, day. to this day. Yeah, they're kind of ahead of the curve on that. Like To this day. To this day. To this day. Yeah. So I'm going the rocker. Sweet. Larry, take us away. Um, can you say the question again? Like better for music, like more realistic? Better, better depiction of the music of the industry. Music the industry. Uh, I mean, I'll go with, I'll probably, I agree with everything David said. I feel like I'm still going to go with Rockstar because oh, it's just the 80s. <laughs> and I feel like every movie, every movie that's like in that takes place for a band in the 80s is not far off like from that. Like you watch The Dirt, you know, Motley Crue. You see other movies, you know, take place in the 80s like I don't know. I feel like that was more of a legitimate way that things were and like with the business and everyone's kind of like behind the scenes like you know, it's all about the image, like how kind of like what you're saying, like, oh, being apart and the guy, the manager's telling Mark Wahlberg, just live the life. Like so many people want to live this life. Just enjoy it. Just live it. You know what I mean? Like, just do it. And I mean, I don't live that life. I've never seen that side of life, but I would imagine that that's pretty true. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go with that. And then how they were going out behind the scenes saying, okay. You know, when Mark wanted to start writing songs, he pulled him aside and was like, look, we're writing the songs. That's it. You know what I mean? Like, we're, you know, we're in creative control and, like, all the the behind-the-scenes, like, politics of, like, being in a band and all that stuff. And it's all part of the business, I would think, like I said. So, I don't know. I feel like that's my pick. That's just my pick. You got to have the hits, you know? Yeah, exactly. Got a tiebreaker. Go ahead, Frank. Uh... I'm gonna go with uh, the rocker because I I just go with the single fact that they keep feeding into the trope of like having the band blow up after they kick their drummer out. So like it happened in the beginning of the movie, it was potentially gonna happen again towards the end of the movie. Then like the beat happened to the Beatles, it happened to Rush. They do it in the movie uh, that thing you do with the Wonders. Like they're a band, they have a hit record. Next thing you know, the drummer breaks his arm. And then they blow up with a different drummer. It might happen with us. Don't get any ideas, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm going with the rocker because I just think that's funny. Because obviously it happens so much in real life that they have to put some of that in a movie. That's my pick. Give it a little highlight. Sweet. Know? Yeah. So we got the rocker taking the W. I mean, you guys could have did that to me when I broke my fingers uh, two years ago. But we did. We, we went to play a show. You we did play a show without me. <laughs> we did. <laughs> But well, it was a makeshift. You didn't replace me. The whole no. thing is, is our replacement bass player lives too far. Yeah. That's yep. the problem. That's uh, 12 hours. Big face. Yeah. Dwight. Yeah. Shout out. Across the country. Shout, Shout out, Dwight. Sweet. Now, 
exciting enough for some questions I got coming up here. They are objective. I know the answers. You don't. Oh so boy. this isn't opinions. Uh-huh. Just take your guess, and I'm going to give you who won. What are you, a dictator now? I love it. Let's freaking hear it, brother. Last of the two-point round. The other objective one will be in the three-point round, and they kind of coincide with each other. Where the stakes are higher. That's where I put it in the third point, Rob. But first up, Drew Moore opening weekend counts for worldwide, you know, so international and domestic. Hmm. Uh, yeah, David, go ahead. I, I don't know. This is tough. If I had to take a guess, I, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, my gut says rock star, but I feel like the rocker maybe might might take it. I don't know. I don't know because they're both pretty like. Excuse me, there. Both like well established like names yeah. and casts and. I don't know. I'm gonna go rock star just because. I feel like it's more of a serious movie, so maybe that's why. I don't know. I mean, you see both trailers, or you see the movie, like, Rockstar feels like a bigger deal, you know? So I could see why you, that's you, what I'm you going think with, that yeah. way. But bigger I, production. <clears throat> but I could totally see the rocker at the same time, so I, I really have no idea, honestly. So you, you said Rockstar. Yes, that's my pick. All right, Larry. Drew Moore opening weekend. Well, Buddy from The Office, Rain, he that was kind of a big deal at that time, right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of might have had something to do with that, but also, yeah, that's what uh, I'm um, what's her name? Jennifer Aniston. Friends was going on at that. Friends and Friends, right? Yeah, she was that on was, top of the world at that. That time, was going though. on at that time too. So she had a big. Oh man, there was big hype there. That's tough, dude. I don't know. There was big hype. Yeah, I mean, if one of these blows out the other, I'm gonna be like, wow, Jesus. Can I? Yeah, can I get a hint? L is it a blowout? No hints, dude. I mean, it's not gonna change my answer. I was. Is it? I mean, it. It could be. I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a numbers game, so I guess you can comparatively it could be a blowout, but I'll share you the numbers in the third point round that will tell you a little bit about both movies. But okay. we're just going to share That's the fine. opening weekend. Opening, opening, weekend. opening weekend, I'm going to go with The Rocker. Uh, Blind. That's just my So thought. we got Rockstar, and we have The Rocker. Frank. I'm going with The Rocker. And I think that Rockstar became more of a cult classic. But I'm thinking opening weekend, the rocker pulled in more more cash. Sweet. More cash. More dough. More bread. So I'm going to tell you, David it. David was right. Ooh. Opening weekend, Rockstar drew. Six million. Uh. Uh, 18,636 at the box office. Measly six mil. It's at thirty five percent of its total gross. And then the rocker had two million six hundred and thirty six thousand and forty eight. At uh forty one percent of its grossing uh income for that movie. So Rockstar takes it. More mm-hmm. opening weekend. Huh. So that's what I was thinking. It just it just seems like that kind of movie that I mean either way it's like that's not crazy numbers for either. Jennifer Aniston, dude. Well, you'll see what I mean by these kind of coincide with each other. Just because a movie did bigger numbers that opening weekend. Was it profitable? <coughs> round of the three-point round. Oh, boy. Which movie was more profitable? And it could be by a uh, smaller margin, bigger margin, but just like technically. Yeah, who made more bang for the buck? Yeah, and I'm not a mathematician. I looked up how to calculate it, and I did the math. I can't do it by myself. I was not a good math guy. <laughs> Juliana knows. I hate that <laughs> stuff. But you know, if you take the world dot the worldwide budget, divide uh, no the worldwide income divided by the the budget, and you get that number, and you times it by a hundred, and you get a percentage. And that's the percentage, right? So yeah. if you got two hundred percent, that means they doubled it. If you get below, they didn't make a profit at all. So anything over a hundred percent is lost decent. Money. Yeah. So okay. there you go. So a hundred percent would break even. Yeah. Okay. So. Which movie was more profitable? Keyword, profitable. Frank. I'm going to go with The Rocker. Because they spent less to make it. Presumably. 
No, it said they did. I could I could tell you the the budget without giving away the answer. So for because you, you said that the one made forty seven percent and the other one made thirty seven percent. Yeah. The, of the take home. So. Okay. So even though they made two million dollars, they still brought home more money. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the Rocker had a fifteen million dollar budget, and Rockstar had a thirty eight million dollar budget. Oh jeez. So bigger production overall. Yeah. So Rock, that's why you Rockstar. could see. Yeah, why you could see it might be a bigger movie. So you're going with Rocker. I'm going with Rocker. All right, Larry. Yeah, forgive me. These movies sound so much alike. Yeah, when, <laughs> it's when we're talking about them, it's like Rocker, Rockstar, you know. Um, Rockster. I would go with The Rocker as well. There's only one guy left. Go ahead, Davey. I mean, I go The Rocker. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like a cheaper movie to be made, so I feel like they probably made more profit. Bigger profit margin. Let us know. Let us know uh, how it went down. Tell us, Al. So they're not far, and it. I will tell you, they're both bona fide flops. Really? Both of them. Both flops. Complete flops. Did not make any of their money back. Both did terribly. So. Wow. For Rockstar. 51%. Fifty-one percent. So they barely made half. Rough. And then for the rocker, you have fifty-eight percent. So Frank's logic definitely gave him the right answer because it's like less money, but they probably took more home, so they may have yeah. none of them broke even at all. Mm-hmm. So they're both flops, but yeah, the rocker had more of a profit margin technically. Wow. Seven percent wow. more, but still, still won. Yeah. Big old flop. So what you're saying is they didn't lose as much money as as a rock. Not as by rock much, started. but yeah. yeah. But they still lost. Yeah, right. <laughs> they're both. I they're looked up. Bad. I like Google. Like both of them said, box office flop. Wow. Is like yeah. what, for both movies. I mean, it's tough, dude. The movie world is rough because it takes a lot to make it. Like it takes a lot of money to make, a, you know, a real real fucking film. But I feel like rock, right. rock star like it's always on TV. That's why I, I felt like it became over a cult classic because I feel like it's been on TV. On what channel? I've never seen it on TV. VH1, sometimes oh, okay. it's on AMC. I, it. I grew up watching that movie. Yeah. never seen it before recently, yeah. to be honest. Last summer, the, the, the song got popped, stuck in my head on the way home, and I, got, I went home and rented it. Stay alive, oh. it's now. No, so not even that one. Which the one, one where he's it? in the studio. The slower one? Yeah. Uh, the thing is with the TV stuff, though, is it's like if a network just like has ownership or that's their studio, True. Like, they could just play it. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I don't know all those facts, but... Yeah. Then we all Still. die young. I mean, like the like the actors and stuff, they're gonna get like royalties when it's yeah. when it's played. But I'm saying I never see the rocker on TV. Yeah. Well, it that's what I'm saying. It might not be like owned by a company that has a TV network. Yeah. Where like certain TV networks have studios, you know. True. So it's like tied in. Rock and roll. That was fun. You know, it, it, it's fun going with the object uh, the objectivity sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean. Most deaf. I like it. Last for the three-point round. Uh-oh. Oh, oh boy. More influential Best... on the band, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best fictional band. Now, for the rocker, I'm going to allow Vesuvius and AED, ADD. I guess you could compare Vesuvius to Steel Dragon more, like, because they're kind of the same more thing. similar, yeah. The 80s but, band, yeah. But you, you can pick. I'll let you pick both bands with Rockstar and then, obviously, Steel Dragon. So, who's the better? Like, if you were going to buy a ticket tomorrow to go see one of these bands, which band would you pick if they were real? Ugh. I'm going to go with Larry. Steel Dragon, man. Zach Wilde. <laughs> I mean, even though he might not be Zach Wilde in the movie, that's still the guitar. It still shreds. Mm-hmm. And those songs are decent. I mean, the Vesuvius band and ADD band are good bands sure but I feel like nobody wanted to be in Vesuvius everybody wanted to be in Steel Panther you mean Steel Dragon? Steel Dragon. I'm sorry, <laughs> Steel Panther the actual <laughs> band <laughs> but uh yeah Steel Dragon I feel like I mean, they did pick that life too so yeah. it's hard to get them confused right. yeah. they're easy right. in my bed no, yeah. uh, but no I feel like Steel Panther if I w- had to hear the two of them I would pick Steel Dragon. Sweet. Uh, Frank, go ahead. 
Yeah, probably Steel, steel, uh, steel Dragon. You almost said Panther. I yeah. almost said Panther. I saw that. Even though it is funny, like in both movies, at the end of The Rocker, Vesuvius has fake accents, and then the one lead singer that was got kicked out of Steel Dragon, he also had a fake accent. Yeah. I just, I just thought that was funny when I was watching both of them. Like, well, that's kind of comical. But, yeah, I mean... If I'm, 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 I'm going to see the two, sound like I am, the, the ADD band, like th- it's really not my kind of music. Like th- the drums were like the most impressive part of it all. That's but what made them exciting because it was like loud rock drums yeah. and like the angsty little like you know. Teen or he's rock. playing it all slow and sad. He's like, follow my tempo, and he, they started off, and next thing you know, it's like a hip song. And the song was called Bitter, and he's just like, say I'm not. Say bitter. I'm not bitter. <laughs> and then he like picks up the tempo. He's, I'm not bitter, but I seen better days. <laughs> Sweet. David, who'd you rather see? Steel, motherfucking dragon. I agree, hundred percent. Come on, that'd be a lit yeah. concert, dude. Are you kidding me? Stand up and shout, dude. Vesuvius was cool, but just not it. It's just not it. And the other, I'm I'm good on the other man. So, <laughs> personally, I, I actually almost put for a question, but I switched out. But I was gonna say better uh, fake British accent. <laughs> <laughs> That'd have been funny. Definitely, I'd say the guys in uh, Rockstar. Yeah. But they're supposed to be real. I know. It, well, not Mark Wahlberg. Well, Mark Wahlberg, yeah, he but does he, it really good. He fake, yeah, he had to fake his too. Yeah. He's trying, <laughs> like, he's practicing. Like, trying well, there to... were some points on stage where he didn't, I think he faked it to be funny, yeah. but they're, like, he's he's not faking he spoke the truth accent. on the stage, talking about I'm just a regular guy. You know, but isn't it funny that the first time he does the concert, he's really excited about it, and he's still doing the same spiel by the end of the movie, and it's yeah. way more jaded. Yeah. And he's just like, "I was just one of you guys," and he yeah. totally wasn't <laughs> yeah. excited about it. Yeah. When he falls and cracks his head, he open, busts though, his ass. Yeah. Epic, that dude. shit's awesome. It becomes a routine. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's part of the show. It's part of the show. He won't be out. Or guys, <laughs> oh my gosh. This is our first ever bonus round on camera. Oh my god. Oh my god. Bonus round. The bonus round. Oh, David's gonna make me pass out. That was intense. Le bonus round. Gotta get a little excitement going for the bonus. Wants to go first. It's so round. Who wants it? Who wants it? I'll go first. All right, go ahead, Frank. Fuck it. Uh, I'm going to give... I'm going to say fuck it. Just give both both movies five points each. Uh, I like The Rock Star a lot because I like when, when he is enjoying it, and it is good until it starts becoming bad. Like, he buys the Batmobile. Like, he's racing down a tarmac. Like, he's just like doing all these things that he's always dreamed about living that life yeah he's living the life and it just seems really fun i mean who wouldn't want a, a 60s style batmobile true like it just sounds adam epic. west yeah exactly adam west and then uh for the rocker five points it's just i, I just really like i'm gonna just say i like the rocker better of a movie out of the two like as a whole, not if we're not breaking each little part down, because I just like the story and I think it's funny that like he finally catches a break, but he has to be in his nephew's band, and then it works out because he gets caught playing naked, and then the the sister puts on YouTube, and like they just blow up because he's a naked drummer, and even on the first when they had the first show and it has their name, it's spelled wrong. It just put it's just A D, <laughs> and underneath it says the famous naked drummer. <laughs> like, like that's the real reason why they're on tour. Yep. But they don't even they they read it. They're like, wow, our first marquee, and they don't even notice it at all and don't care about the name. And they even say, now playing next is AD, and they don't even correct them because they're just. I just feel like they're so excited. They're just happy to be there. Yeah, they're just happy to be there. So it is what it is. You those know, are, those are my points. Sweet four and four. Let's go next. I'll go next. Sweet. Um, I think it's funny when in uh, Rockstar when when he's pretty much set in his ways on like fleeing the scene, 
he's talking to the manager and he's talking about how, yeah, I was married and I was just taking a piss in the stall and then I left. He's like, and I never saw my wife again and she married my best friend and whatever. They had all these kids. And then when he leaves at the end of the movie, like he's walking out and the manager stops him. He's like, where are you going? Blah, 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 blah. And he's just like, I got to go take a piss. <laughs> Yeah, and he just yeah. smirks. And he smirks because he like, knows the manager bastard. knows. Yeah, the manager knows that he's about to bail, and like <laughs> it's just funny. So he knows like that's pretty much the cue. Yeah, and he brings the other <laughs> the other singer up, and it's kind of like the full circle moment. I thought that that was cool. So I'll give points for that. I'll give three points for that, and then uh, I got to give another point for Zach Wilde again, just because he's one of my favorite guitar players, and I think that that's awesome. That that's really him in the movie, and it's actually him shredding. Uh, so I guess four points. And then for Rocker, it's been a while since I've seen that one. I'll give, um, that's the, um, get it on, bang a gong, get it on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bang it on, yeah. Like, when you know, he when he's, like, up, warming up. His pocket. Yeah, yeah. Good, <laughs> it's, good luck, it's a good luck charm. <laughs> yeah. I got to give a point for that because that's just reckless. So ridiculous. Yeah. I either throw up or get the runs for every show. Last night, I got both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, so I'll give three points for that just because I think that that's awesome. So four for Rockstar, three for the Rocker. Sweet. There you go. You want me to go next? Sure. All right, man, don't get mad at me because I, like, I feel like what I'm about to say you were going to say. Oh, shit. The Rocker for the Michael Myers slash Undertaker sit-up. <laughs> oh, dude. Were you gonna say it? Were I you gonna say it or no? I, I actually wasn't. But okay, good. Yeah, because in the beginning, well, yeah, it's in the beginning. He when the band leaves him and he goes chase him down, and then like he's he's like fucking running next to the fucking van. He's like, dude, I was going sixty miles per <laughs> <Yeah>. hour. <laughs> what the fuck? And then he like stabs the drumsticks through the top of the van and is crawling to yeah, the front. Dude. And then they <laughs> stop. It whips him off. He falls on the ground and they're like, dude, we killed him. And you think he's dead, and then he does the fucking classic, just like straight sit up, turns the head. It's just like, oh, dude, perfect, awesome. So I was just gonna give that movie uh, three points for that one. Sweet, yeah, because I thought that was uh, a great, just a great thing to add, you know. Um, and the rock, let's go, rock star. I'm definitely gonna do. One point for Zach Wilde, one point for joining your favorite band, The Dream. And then I'm going to do one point for the end of him like transitioning into almost like this grungy character and like going solo because it's just hilarious to me like with the times and yeah with the times and accurate and i'm sure there's been so many singers who went down that path um yeah, that's, i'm just gonna do that three and three yeah, three and three for me ah uh, yeah you know, it's gonna be hard to i think i'm i'm gonna give four points to the rocker um I just think there's more uh, laughable moments in there. And I'm like a big, like everyone knows, I'm a big line guy with movies. I do the one-liners for yes. movies and stuff. I do remember one. And I don't know if Larry remembers this, but I think our cousin Marty, but I remember that part when he's on the window. I was going to talk about the first scene, but not what you're talking about. But when he's on the window, he slides over and he goes, I will eat your soul. Yeah. yeah. And Marty yeah. used to say it all the time that after whole, that movie came shit. out. That whole I will eat your soul. <laughs> And it's just so surreal, and he's just dude. running like as fast as the car. He's like, dude, I was going sixty. <laughs> and even prior to that, I think what's hilarious is that when they're when the manager or agent dude's trying to like tell them like they want to replace Fish, they're just like, no, he's the heart and soul of the band, blah. But he's like, you know, there was talks that you guys opened him for White Snake, and then they're like, oh, oh really? And then they change their mind, and, and then they just fucking kick him out. It's hilarious, dude. I, I mean. love White Snake. Yeah, it's like White Snake, not everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not even like it back then either. Like the time they're in is like yeah. it's not like it's like what? Yeah, it's at the tail end of that yeah. era. It's, yeah, it's just hilarious. And then yeah, I mean that whole, that whole movie's overall funny. 
I think another notable one is my favorite was it when Matt is sleeping on the top bunk underneath where um, uh, Emma Stone is laying under there, and she thinks she he's staring at him. Or no, he was like snoring. He's like staring at her. He's like, "You good?" And he's like, "Yeah, w- what's up?" And he also uh, he's just staring nice. at her again. And I just that just like the little things in that movie just make me chuckle. And I, I'm gonna give that you know just last last love to Matt. Ugh. You get a little sad boy on you first, but I identified with that kid when I was younger. You know what I mean? He's just, like, not the ladies' man. He was the pudgy guy, and he thought he was cool because he was in a band. And, not like, I love playing bass because I love playing bass, but, like, I identify with that dude. Like, you shy to talk to the girl, and he he's just like, you know, look at me. You know what I mean? I am not, you know, the best-looking guy here, and this girl, you know, is I me, and he was super nervous. And I, like, especially at that time when it came out, I was still a kid, and... I just really, like, resonated with me because I felt like he did when I was younger. But, uh, yeah. I came out of my shell later on, you know? That was touching, you. He ends up dating Emma Stone, no? No. Uh, the singer in Emma Stone ended up oh. hooking up. He's with the super fan that has the there I Love Matt t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, there it is. And yeah. he goes and talks to her. But, yeah, I love that guy, and I think he's, like, the unsung, like, he's not, he's super dry, but, like, the stuff he says is really funny. Yeah. And I then. Agree with that. You gotta have that guy. So that's four points. And I'm going to give... Uh, I'm going to give three points to Rockstar. While there's not a laughable moment, the craziest part of that whole movie is when him and Jennifer Aniston wake up in a room with a bunch of naked people and they're not together. <laughs> and then he goes out, and the girl is pissing, standing up. <laughs> He's like, Whoa. And she was all over him and making out with both of them and then hands them PCP or ecstasy or whatever some they shit. took, some shit. And Crazy. it, and then after that, they just like looked at each other like, we're just not going to talk about it, but that's never going to happen again. <laughs> and that part that's where, of the That's movie, where it started going downhill. Yeah, totally downhill. But they're having so much fun, and they're like, was that fun? They don't even remember. But that's what I'm saying, though, about uh, Jennifer Aniston just being, like, being a real one, though. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, she was she, she did it, too. Honestly. Yeah, like, she she was partaking for a minute. She like, tried, she, but she then after that, that, that's when she was like, I'm, I'm going. Yeah. yeah. You can only take so much, you know. Yeah. But, not, not for everybody. Then he forgets when she's coming. Yeah. I thought you were coming yada yada. To she Seattle. Like, he's like, you, you are in Seattle. 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 <laughs> he didn't know. <laughs> Crazy. And he's got a beer gut at that time. Yeah. Like, he's all shredded early on. Yeah. And like, when you see him, he's all teed up, and he's got a little beer belly, like, drooping down. It's kind of funny. And then the last thing. I mean, overall, both movies, I think, have good original songs by the band, but that We All y- Die Young song is fucking epic. Oh, yeah. That is an epic tune. If that was a real song, I I wonder if it's on Spotify. I might bump it later on it tonight. Is. Oh, it really is? Yep. Well, it is a real song. I can't say if it were a real song. It is a real song, but it's not a real band. But that song yeah. is really good, in yeah. my opinion. Take Someone my wrote life. it somewhere. Well, Zach Wilde's on it. Blair. It yeah. my oh, you gotta bone. love that. <laughs> yeah. My cat But yeah, four hands. and three. <laughs> four and three. So uh, somebody like fill it. up airspace while I do the tallies. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna fill up Shout out space. for uh, hey, 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 for the hey, hey. Steel Dragon fan base for totally just being cool with a new lead singer. I feel oh, like yeah. so many real bands, if that actually happened, they'd be like, oh, fuck this. Like, yeah. Who's this guy? But they're all just like raging. Like, ah, well, he, just filled, he, filled the, he just filled the spot. So it yeah. wasn't even like. Right. It didn't matter. Like, he, there was no individualism. Like, yeah, he, it was he, just And he realized Panther. that when he went to go show them his songs, and they're like, yeah. no, man, you're just the singer of, of, of this band. Yeah. That's all you are. Yeah. That's all you ever Facts, be. yeah. That's all you're going to be, kid. But even still, you know, like, in real life, like, in real shit, me. like. One of my favorite bands, like, changed singers. Like, I mean, I wouldn't be, like, anti, but I would be, like, questionable. I like, mean, oh. if he's good. If he's good, he's good, he's for good, sure. You know? For sure, That's yeah. That's what it comes down to, man. Facts. Honestly. Some people, though, can't be replaced. Yeah, That's you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? Obviously, the original singer must not have been that guy. Like, it, it some people, it's like, if you're going to replace, it's going to completely change everything. Some, and then that could be good. I mean, it could be okay, but it'll never be, like, the same thing. With certain people. Yeah. Well, I feel like there are some bands that, you know, would be kind of whatever. Yeah. It just depends. And obviously, it was that way with Steel Panther. I mean, they're pulling guys right off from the front row. Yeah. Dragon. Dragon. Uh, you're in. <laughs> yeah, Steel Dragon. Steel Dragon. This episode is about Steel Dragon. 
Not Steel not Panther. Not Steel Panther. It's all good. You guys want to know who won? Who? It was yeah. really close. Oh. It was. This is super close. Ooh, nail biter. Taking the the win for today, the W is Rockstar with twenty three. Ow! The Rocker is twenty one. So it's really wow. close. Let's go, Marky Mark. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. You know, Mark we want Wahlberg, that baby. We want that Wahlburger endorsement. All right, Marky. Wahlburger. Listen, listen, man. Get in there. We love burgers. We love burgers. We like your movies. Burg. Just just do it already. Seem like a funny know? guy. We mess with you. Like you're a Boston dude. We're Chicago. We're not far off. Like. Pretty similar, you know. We're hard. Sure. Yeah. Hello, vibe. Hey. Oh, any final words on the movies? Um, not off for no. me. No. If you haven't seen them, go yeah, watch them. Yeah, they're good go, movies. Go to Blockbuster. Yeah, they're awesome. Rent them, huh? They're flopperoonies, but they're not bad. I tell you what. <laughs> yeah, they they both technically flopped. So. I feel like generally music movies that aren't biopics about already established people don't really, like, historically, yeah, they all don't hard. do well at the box office, it's even if they're great movies. That. Just like you said, like, I think more people like, or Frank kind of said, like, more people probably like Rockstar now than they did when it came out because it yeah, became true. kind of a cult classic status and it kind of grew over time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know, it's hard. Yeah, it's definitely a tough thing to do, like the music movies, you know. Yeah, there's some great, like you said, the biopics are always going to do well, especially you're you're doing it about super famous people. But like being more of like a just an original music movie is definitely tough, you know. Sometimes you strike gold. I think I think it really just takes the right actor and the right story. Like School of Rock is yep. just such a good example. Perfect. That's a banger. Perfect guy. Perfect role. Ten perfect. out of ten. You know what I mean? I think that's really what it comes down to sometimes, you know. Oh yeah. Well, sweet. Well, we got episode. I mean, it was this episode uh, twenty-seven, I believe. But this is episode number one of the video version of Arbor Creek's Battle Supreme. Oh, 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 oh. to this day. One to and done. Day. We appreciate whoever uh, whoever's watching this. We love you. Make sure you share the podcast uh, via audio if uh, video is not your thing. You know, uh, leave us a rating or review. Share this video when it's up. Uh, you know, share some, you know, constructive criticism. Just or share your feelings. Comments. Uh, Tell me how you feel. Yeah, just let us know how you Open feel. Up to we'll us. Uh, Call me. Talk to y'all real Open soon. Your hearts. Uh, the website is arborcreektheband.com. There you can find all our social handles. And uh, sign up for our email list. Uh, we'll have a bunch of exclusive stuff. We'll let you in on a some secrets early and yeah. stuff like that. If you didn't know, people who signed up for our email list, they found out we were doing the video before this video even comes out. Oh, shit. <laughs> so Exclusive. We let people in on the secrets. So if you want to join, yeah. uh, join uh, arborcreektheband.com. Uh, there'll be a sign-up form on the bottom. You'll also get a free tune and uh, other goodies. How about that, huh? Join, join the army, the cult of the creek. Creek Brigade. Peace out. Bye. So long.